I think I think Future's brand is getting better because I think the more people start to learn about like how long he's really been around. Yeah. You know, because it, it's surprising, but I saw this thread. The one he wrote was like Blueberry Yum Yum by Luda. That was the one I learned about. That's like 2004. So to be from 2004 to 2011, seven years of career, that's already impressive. And then to go from that 2011 to today, which is another 13 years, that's also impressive. Like, all oh, that shit is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you think about yeah, it. This like, industry especially. Yeah. But I remember he came up with the Dungeon Family. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what brings us to the next topic because that man Pluto said last year was- he dropped 250 bands to break his music <laughs> last year I was getting 3,500 a show at this time and this year I'm getting 20 because I always wanted to see myself go up the hill nigga I did this shit in a year if you really on your grind man it can happen only thing you gotta do is believe so when I'm throwing numbers I'm throwing numbers for the dude who ain't getting the 20 a show who trying to get it to let them know it didn't take me nothing but a year but only thing, it did take a lot of hard work. It took 24 hours being in the studio. It took my girl being mad at me. It took me not being around my kids like I want to be. It took me doing interview after interview. It took me doing phoners. It took me doing drops for different DJs. It took me to go to the club, throwing goddamn over a quarter million, just blowing it every time I go in the club, making that impression, making sure everybody on the music and, and doing it for a cause. You got a hot song. You get whatever for it, you know what I'm saying? So really, I went and spent my money, my own money out of my pocket. Every time I'm going to the club, it took a lot to get that 20. It just didn't come just from me just rapping in the studio. Then the next day I performed and they told me they was going to give me 20. you like, hey, man, you know what I'm saying? I'm selling this audience this, this, this rich lifestyle before I got it and it worked. <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair, he's spending it wisely for what his brand is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we talk about some of these artists being broken, not having the money. Well, what are they spending on? Him, his was specific path. He was spending it to make more money. Yeah. His goal was to go from thirty five hundred a show to twenty k. Yeah. And he did that in a year, doing exactly what he just said. Yeah. So yes, his audience. We know that a part of the perception is throwing money in the club. Right, make it shit look lit. But that creep, but that's marketing. Yeah. Right. So he was spending money on marketing, while in some of these cases, you're just talking about straight up maintaining lifestyle and perception, which is it's like it's such a fine line. Yeah. Right. Such a fine line. And Fantasia's demographic, I don't think would benefit from that perception like Futures would. Yeah. Right. So that's a whole another thing. There's a lot of artists who are caught in that loop who don't get a direct impact and um level of growth from appearing to be rich yeah futures yeah you know and then the type of music you got like come on it's, it's that's what it is and that's the environment that he wants his music to play in mm-hmm. you know you throw it in a strip club i want it to play in a strip club so i'm setting the tone setting the experience so it's, it's a little bit different but i think bigger than that is j- just his mentality he's talking about even the sacrifices that, that he made you know, I know a lot of people like to be like, hey, future got a lot of kids and I like to kind of give them like a fuckboy uh, brand. But hey, he said this right here is early on. I don't want to miss my kids. I mean, I, I not not be with my kids, but I got to work. He talked about it as a sacrifice, which I think I feel like men kind of like get um, what word am I looking for? Like this for that a lot. Mm. Like they want like entrepreneurial. Yeah. Men is like. No, just because I made the decision to do this, it don't mean that I don't miss the yeah. thing that I'm not doing. Yeah. I might I really want to be at that birthday. This hurts me too. You think you're the only one hurt. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So for those people who are inspired by that and need to, you know, get that understanding that you are gonna have to miss some of those things and you're gonna have to have some of those discussions, which actually lead a lot back to what we were talking about before we started the pod. Oh, yeah. But that's just a little too deep <laughs> for today. We, you know, we're gonna wait till the brain expands a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a real thing. There's moments that you miss, yeah. right? So, like the way future moves, like people say, it couldn't have been Pluto. I think it's very clear, which is why we questioned. I think that was last pod why we were like future wouldn't turn down a million dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's very much so about his money and very strategic. Although people wouldn't give future smart, like a lot of people wouldn't think smart. 
just because of his brand. Yeah. You assume at the same time you're not assuming stupid. Yeah. But just being a street artist for for whatever reason, like Jay Z is like the only one that came out with a brand of people thinking he's smart from any kind of like street hustle yeah, category. That's true. I think I think Future's brand is getting better because I think the more people start to learn about like how long he's really been around. Yeah. You know, because it, it's surprising, but I saw this thread on Instagram the other day that was like just songs that were written by artists and you didn't know it. And like, bro, it was, it was going through like Future on there, bro. Future wrote some stuff back in the day that I didn't even realize he was in the music industry yet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, and, and it's like, bro, like old Ludacris songs. He's in like the video for like Bubba Sparks, Miss New Boo. Like a point in time, I didn't even know, I didn't even know he was in the music industry yet. Cause you know, I feel like for most like Future fans, like he started to appear for me around, you know, I don't know, probably like, well, Rax, you know what I'm saying? When Rax first came out, mm. that was the first time I ever heard of Future. Was that shit came out, you know? And that was like so 2000, small. like 11, 10, 11, something like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm, um, yeah, definitely like 2010, yeah. 11-ish. So it's like, to, so like you said, bro, to be an artist that was like, let's 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 do like, the one he wrote was like Blueberry Yum Yum by Luda. That was the one I learned about. That's like 2004. So to be from 2004 to 2011, seven years of career, that's already impressive. Yeah, and then to go from that 2011 to today, which is another 13 years, that's also impressive. Like all oh, that shit is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like when you think about it, this like, industry especially. Yeah, but remember, he came up with the Dungeon Family. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so, like being around, you know that. So some artists and managers are just waiting for lucky moments when the ones who are killing it have systems to consistently take artists to another level over and over again. And if you want to see what that looks like, we just did a collab where we not only show the system that we use that's resulted in billboard hits, some of the biggest viral moments on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, but also we got J.R. McKee to break down how he took an artist from zero to one of the biggest hit songs of 2022 and getting a Grammy in January of 2023. This is recent stuff, not old tactics. If you want to check it out, go to www dot brandmannetwork.com slash grammy don't forget the www or it won't work because jr gets into the details of looking at the data decisions that got made how much content got created and how they adjusted the content over time for different parts of the campaign this is real behind the curtains type of stuff so again go to www.brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy, if you want to check this out and apply it to yourself, back to the video. Different. He wasn't technically in in, but he saw some different things, and he that probably is what allowed him to navigate yeah. and get that game. He just doesn't present like the rest of the yeah. that Dungeon family, you know. So people don't know where you came from because you're not presenting like where you came from, and that's what shocks them. Yeah. Because then, if you think about what Future does, and again, because of the category he's in. Him, the they did, originally when they first came out, they didn't get the respect for the creativity that they had. It was just like, oh, what's this mumble rapper? Or like you know, a lot of people got thrown in that category when it wasn't even all the same, right? And like, what is this? They just making noise, da da da. But then if you rewind, and then you say, hey, some of his lineage is Dungeon Family, and then you look at a Andre and a C CeeLo and people like that. Mm -hmm. You know, then you, you sprinkle it with some street shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just like get me talking about it. Like, I mean, we were street dudes, a lot of us, and or we had street things going on, but we just didn't talk about that in our music. Mm -hmm. So it was just like you you repackage the same type of creativity. So if you know, future, I would love to see his story when that one come out. Yeah, but his documentary gonna be crazy. His would be dope. Yeah, his like, be his crazy. would be dope. But, but yeah, man, look. Like he said, some cases artists spending money in this, and that perception is making them go broke. Some of them are spending to win, and it actually is helping them level up. But I think there is like just a fine line in how you do it. Strategic brand spending is what it's about. Like yes. you said, like I'm going to buy this ten thousand dollar outfit because I have two shows and an appearance that I can make while I'm making that money back. Versus I'm going to buy this ten thousand dollar outfit to sit in the house. Thanks. One's gonna help you go up, the other's just gonna fuck you eventually. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so that's why I got it up. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll leave it at that for today. <laughs> I'm Redman Sean. And I'm Corey. And we out. Peace. Peace.